our Delta the math video. This one is still we're on qu uh, quadratic attributes. So this time we're working on quadratic word problems, profit and uh, gravity. Uh, these are some of the most popular ones that kids like to do. All right, second, I'm sorry, I'm kind of like trying to multitask at two things here. All right, so anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this a little different. Uh, most kids like this way, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I do not have a problem with you doing it um, this way on any problem, as long as you understand what's going on. In fact, the key thing is to know what's going on and use your tools that you can use. And so we are going to use a tool here. Instead of doing a bunch of math and calculating it and spending a long time on this, there is a quicker way to do it. And we're gonna put this equation in either a graphing calculator or Desmos. And since you get to use both on the star test and everybody has to take the star test, even those that are home have to take the star test at school. So if you're at school, I mean, you've been home this whole time. When star test comes, you'll be assigned a room to go take your star test at school. All right, so anyway, we are, uh, the question, this is a word problem, and usually, like I said, these are pretty, I mean, you kind of make sense of this. A rocket is launched from a tower. The height of the rocket, Y, is in feet. So we know this right here is in feet. Uh, is related to the time after X launches. All right, the X represents time in seconds. It's right here. I mean, it's telling you right here, X in seconds. But again, use the equation to find the maximum height by the rocket to the nearest foot. All right, so the first thing I wanna tell you is a lot of kids are wanna know, there's things, information here it's telling you. If it's, you notice this is a rocket is launched from a tower. Okay, so how high is the tower? Well, it's right here. This right here is telling you how high the tires. So if you ever see this number on there, that's the starting point. That's where we're starting our problem. That's when the, the distance is um, at the t when time is zero. So if you put a zero here, this becomes zero, put a zero here, this becomes zero. And remember X represents time. So zero means you're starting, all right? And so think about it, when you're at a race, you're fixing to start a race, before you start the race, what's the time? It's zero. So, but this is telling you that since this is the height, when X is zero, it'll be 57 feet in the air. All right, so we're on a 50 foot tall, tower and or at least the rocket is all right so here's what we're gonna do we're going to open up desmos and i'm going to put this equation in desmos and i'm going to have to write this equation in because i will not remember it off the top of my head so and just to also let you know a lot of times they like to use instead of the variable x they like to use t for time and they like to use h of t for the y value you know, height of time or F of T or something like that. Just make sure I got my numbers right. All right, and a lot of times whenever you see negative 16, this is a very common number as well. It has to do with gravitational, you know, like when things are falling or going up from the earth. This is like the initial velocity. It's like how fast it's increasing and stuff. And this is your starting point. <laughs> You'll learn this in IPC when you do IPC. All right, so I'm gonna go, Raph, and I'm going to, I was doing something different. So, all right, so here we go. And I'm gonna get my, get everything back the way it was because I've been messing with this earlier doing something else. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna put this equation, it's y equals a negative 16. And don't forget it's a x, so we wanna put an exponent here. We hit the shift at six and put a little two in there. Make sure you click out of that. Uh, plus 136 is the equation. Wow, that thing just really shot up, didn't it? And then we're going to say X again, because it's X. And then we're going to say plus 57, which is our starting point. Now, you can't see it very well, can you? Because one thing is, you know, you start off at 57, the tower's at 57 high. You do see here zero, and this is a negative. There's no way you could have a negative time. So here's my zero. So zero is going to, the red line is going to be at 57. So I'm going to go to where 57 is, and it's going to, if I can get my cursor to go down, go here. All right, so here we go. So here is 57 right there. All right, that's where the rocket actually, and I don't have it exactly, there it is. That's where the tower is exactly. So if you see this, I don't know if I can, 
expand this way. All right, you can see that this thing is really shooting up. Let me see if I can zoom out. Boy, this thing's really up in the air, isn't it? So anyway, it's at 57 now. The, the time intervals have changed. These are probably going about 10, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Yes, yeah, so this is 60. So 57 is right about here. Let's see, I'm a little bit off. Right there, it's 57. So that's where how tall the tire is. All right, from zero to 57. All right, the question is, how high is the rocket go? So we got to we got to find how high does this rocket go? And remember at the beginning, it tells you which one, oh, there it is right there. They're telling you that the Y value, let's go back to the equations you see it. They're saying Y, the height of the rocket is in Y feet. So if you go to Desmos, this is your Y axis. So this is the height, this is 300 feet, this is 250, this is, two, this is 250, this is 200. And they also said that X represents seconds right here. X in seconds. So this here, these numbers down here are your seconds. All right, so if I click here, that is in seven. Oh, there we go. So it starts, it's in 8.9 seconds. So in 8.9 seconds, the rocket hits the ground. That's what it's telling you because the height is measured here. All right, so if we click here, it says here in 4.25 seconds, remember the X value is your second. So the first number is your seconds. The second number in my parentheses is how high it went. It went 346 feet in the air, all right? And so that's what it looks like. Now I know you can't really see much here, but if we zoomed in, it really is shooting straight up and then it comes down. All right, so what was the 346? Yep, yeah, 346. So I'm gonna go to Delta Man, and they wanna know how, how high it went, it's 346. That's how high it went. And so see, we got it right. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we can set our parameter on Desmos math to look a little more like this, but I mean, it's it works fine with the way we do it. So you can see that, see 57 is right about there. So you shoot it off, it goes whoosh, way up here about 340 in 4.3 seconds, it reaches its maximum height and then it falls down. It hits the ground pretty close to about nine seconds, 8.9 I think is what we said. So it actually hits the ground in 8.9 seconds the time you launch it. So we launch it and then 8.9 seconds later, it hits the ground. See how nice this is to use Desmos in these problems? All right, so we're gonna do another one. A rocket is launched from a tower. Well, this is the same basic type question, All right? So again, the gravitational pull, this is the velocity, how fast it's moving up, right? And this one's moving up faster than the other one. And we're higher this time. We're on a, we're on a tower that's 1.8, that's 79 feet up in the air. So if you were to predict, what do you think? Now remember it's going faster. So the rocket will get, will go up faster so will it go up higher i mean we already know that it's compared to the other one it's already like 21 or 22 feet higher than the last rocket so let's put this in our equation and see what happens we can compare the two actually all right so let's go ahead and the only thing we have to change really is the last two so i'm just going to go in here and change this this is always going to be negative 16 x squared or xt or whatever they use because you're talking about gravitation Okay, all right, and I imagine it's asking the same thing, right? Uh, find, oh, ooh, look here, find the time that the rocket will hit the ground. Oh, that's a difference, see how it worked? Okay, so we know, that's usually what they all ask. So they wanna know when does it hit the ground? All right, so we're going to scroll down here. And then you're like, my gosh, it didn't last long at all. But if you put your cursor right there and click on it, look how long until it took the ground, 12 seconds. So it took longer. It probably went up high too. Let's see how high it went just for the heck of it. So it goes up there. Wow, this one really went up there, didn't it? It's still going. Look at there. It went 637 feet in almost six seconds. All right, so the answer is 12. It went 12 seconds. Okay, you're gonna hit the nearest 12 seconds. Oh, I missed it. What's it saying? Did I read it wrong? 
use the equation find the time that the rocket will hit the ground to the nearest one hundredth of a second. Oh, they wanted the decimal point too, one hundredth. I didn't see the one hundredth part, so that's my fault. We did have twelve, we just didn't have the point two two in there. So if you go back here, and we go back here, I just didn't read the question right, which does happen. That's why you have to be very careful in these. These can get very Might have been, no, let's see if I'd round it off, it'd have been 12.22. All right, let's try one more just to show you that I do know what I'm talking about. All right, so that was a good question because it. All right, so here we go. A company sells widgets. All right, so a widget is like, a, it could be just a make believe item. The amount of profit Y, okay, so Y is going to be my profit, how much money we made is related to the sell price of the widgets X. So, so let's say you're selling shirts. Okay, a shirt could be a widget, all right? So it's price per shirt, like $5 a shirt. So X represents the number of shirts that you're gonna sell, all right? Using the equation, find out what price the widgets must be sold, must be sold for the nearest cent for the company to make a profit, a maximum profit. Wow, so here we go. We're gonna put this problem in here. Notice this is not negative 16 because it's not talking about something going up in the air and something coming back down. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my Desmos. Put my equation in. Okay, hopefully I wrote it right. <coughs> All right, so remember, we got to read the question. I didn't read it good last time. All right, so here it is. Use the equation to find out what price the widgets must be sold. All right, now price has to do with the X value to make your maximum profit. Okay, so we have to look at the graph. We have to find the maximum. Now we got to just find the maximum. Whoa, man, this is really going up, isn't it? I'm trying to, this is one thing about this is you gotta have to play with this to get it going where you want it. So I'm just scrolling so I can see the max. It's getting close, all right, there it is. All right, so if I put my little cursor right there. Okay, so it says 26.7. And my profit be 47.93. All right, so let's read the question again just to make sure we know we're reading. The amount of profit Y made by the company is related to the sell price. We know by the, use this gra uh, use this equation. Find out what price the widgets should be sold for to the nearest cent. Near cent. Think about it. That's two decimal places for the company to make a maximum profit. All right, so here we go. I'm going to say. $26.70. This is how much you'd make. This is how much you sell for each shirt. You know, let's say it's a shirt. All right, so here we go. 26.70. And so there we go, see? Best price. All right, we'll do one more. These are fun to do because you, you do them and then once you kind of get them, you're, they're really easy. All right, so here we go. Another rocket one, yay. All right, so negative 16. X squared plus 170X plus 61. All right, so I'm gonna use Desmos again. I'm gonna put my equation in here. Y equals a negative 16. Oh, got to hit the thing first, don't I? Y equals a negative 16x square plus 70, 170x plus 61. Okay. Now I'm going to hit home again because I know it's going to change. All right, so here is my graph. Okay, we want to read the question. 
use the equation to find the time the rocket will hit the ground to the nearest one hundredth of a second. So that means two decimal places. That's where we messed up last. All right, so we want to know when it hits the ground. Ah, here it is already. Looks like it hits the ground in 10.97. 10.97. Zero represents the number of feet. So then of course, if it's not on the not in the air, it's on the ground, that's zero feet in the air. And it took 10.97 seconds. Now, if it's talking about thousands, then we had to put 9.72, but it's only talking hundredth. So 10.97. And there we go. That's how you do this one.